Cleveland Indians bring down the curtain on the month of August tonight. Red hot Jason Gipnis is hitting four straight, going nine for his last 15. And Michael Brantley, he doesn't want to see August come to an end. He's batted 337 this month. As the Indians welcome in the surging Tampa Bay Rays, Kevin Cash's crew has won nine of their last 10 games, including a three-game sweep of the Red Sox. And earlier this month, they took two out of three from the New York Yankees. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. There was a time when playing Tampa meant uh, you could take a breath and, you know, maybe take it easy, but no more. This is a pretty good ball club, and, Rick, they're playing good baseball, and yet sometimes they do it in unconventional ways. And they don't have a lot of big names that people know about, but I'll tell you what, they know how to play the game of baseball and win because offensively, that's just uh, C.J. Crone. He has 25 home runs, newly acquired Tommy Pham coming over from the St. Louis Cardinals. They just find a way to piece it together, and they play hard for nine straight innings. When you look at them winning nine out of their last ten, you can see they score early, a lot like the Indians do. 54 to 26. 34 of those 54 runs coming in the first four innings. But the starters have pitched only 32 innings. Total opposite of what the Tribe does. The Tribe uses their starters and the bullpen 57 innings. And as a matter of fact, the, the Tribe has pitched 293 less innings than that Tampa Bay Rays bullpen. Well, what's interesting is sometimes they'll throw their, their relievers first, then bring the starter in. They're throwing caution to the wind, whatever it takes to get a win. That's the motto of the Tampa Bay Rays. For the Cleveland Indians, they tend to do things the more conventional way with Corey Kluber on the mound. Well, and Corey Kluber has dominated the last couple of years in his home ballpark, as, as we know. He goes out there, he's 18-5, and five, an ERA right at two in the last two seasons. And in ta against Tampa, he's 2-1 and one in his home park, and he's 4-2 and two in his career. But Kluber goes out there, and you'll see a new Kluber. He will not have a beard tonight. He'll be shaving. See if he can get the Indians off on the right start in this three-game series. Alan Jensen are up next with the big story, and we'll check in with Andre Knott, all ahead of tonight's first pitch, right here on Sports Time Ohio. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Hubut WB Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers, made in Ohio, Ohio proud. And by Staples, the back to school specialty store.
game weekend series. Corey Kluber on the mound for Cleveland. And the Indians will see if they can continue their winning ways after taking two of three from the Minnesota Twins with a win yesterday. Welcome back to center field along with Jensen Lewis, Al Pulowski. Time now for the big story, and that is the trade deadline here that is coming up to add players to your roster that would still be available and eligible for postseason play in October. Here's the latest right now. Andrew McCutcheon is headed to the New York Yankees. The Dodgers a little while ago got Ryan Madsen. And literally just breaking as we came back from commercial, Gio Gonzalez will be traded to the Milwaukee Brewers. So Milwaukee gets their starter. But this Andrew McCutcheon trade, this really raises a lot of red flags about the health of Aaron Judge. Who knows where he's at? So for the Yankees staff to acquire outfield depth, you know that that might be a 50-50 scenario with Aaron Judge. And we will keep you updated on the broadcast here tonight. Also, Ken Rosen is in town from Fox Sports so we hope to have the latest for you Josh Donaldson apparently cleared trade waivers so he could be going somewhere before midnight as well Matt and Rick have the call in the game tonight and fellas a lot happening here this evening yes indeed and this is a team's last chance to try to load up before they make their big playoff push and for the Cleveland Indians they are firmly in control of their destiny with a 14 game lead over the Minnesota Twins in the AL Central as this will be the final day of play in the month of August. On the field, things have been up and down a bit. The Indians were on a pretty good roll, but there are always bumps in the road, especially when you get deep into the season and into the dog days of August that are coming to a close. With more on that, we go downstairs to our man, Andre Knott. Thank you, Matt. You know, for Francisco Lindor, as you said, it's been a long season. The team still feels with a month ago that they have a chance to catch whomever wins in the West. And if they can do that, that would mean they would have home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs. And because of that, Frankie has a message that he wants to get out to the fans that he loves and appreciates most. The fans are the most important thing. You know, we come home, we look forward to uh, spending time with them. We come home um, looking forward for them to cheer us on, you know. And like, this past couple of days, they, they booed one of my teammates. I didn't appreciate that. I love I love every single fan here. I know they're passionate about the game, but we're trying to work as hard as we can day in and day out. And my teammates are working as hard as they can day in and day out. I didn't appreciate how they booed him. I didn't appreciate how they even backed him up. Um, so please, please, this is not characteristic from our fans is continue to support us, continue to um, share our guys. We don't need to get booed. We don't need to get booed. We work as hard as, as hard as we can, day in and day out, to put up a show for them, to make it to the postseason and to win championship for this city. So please don't boo my teammates. No mystery. Francisco Lindor is referring to the people who booed Cody Allen yesterday here at Progressive Field. Look, fans pay their money. They're entitled to say and do as they please. But what Frankie is saying is that unity is uh, what's going to get this club to the top. Yeah, it prevails. They all got to be one. And, uh, you know, he's just sticking up for one of his teammates. And uh, that that's what you call a good teammate right there. So let's check it out tonight. Let's look at Corey Kluber. He's going to be our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher for the Tribe. Kluber 16-7, and seven, second most wins in the league. He will take over the league in uh, innings pitched with a couple of innings tonight. So uh, he was 1-0 last year against Tampa. Uh, four and two in his career and two and one against them in this ballpark. But he's going to face a very hot lineup. So we'll see if Corey can handle them early. And they've been jumping off to early starts. Tampa Bay starting lineup for Kevin Cash. It looks like this. Joey Wendell. One time Cleveland Indian will lead it off. Matt Duffy in the two hole. G-Man Choi will bat third. Then it's Tommy Pham, Jake Bowers and C.J. Crone. Kevin Kiermeyer, Willie Adamas, and Jesus Sucre batting ninth. And the Indians defense brought to you by Ram. Looks like this. Brantley in left. Allen in center. Cabrera over in right. On the infield, Ramirez at third. Lindor at short. Kipnis is at second. Alonzo at first. And Gomes doing the catching. And the umpires. Tonight, Alfonso Marquez has the plate. Jim Wolf at first. Sam Holbrook, the crew chief, is at second. And Chris Siegel is down at third. And with that, we're ready to go on a beautiful night here at Progressive Field. Game time temperature will be 76 degrees. It is absolutely perfect. Labor Day weekend officially underway across America. Corey Kluber delivers 
And first ball swinging. Joey Wendell hammers it into center field for a base hit. Well, this can be an aggressive uh, hitting team from Tampa. And why wouldn't you go after that first fastball if you get it? You're the leadoff hitter. You watch. Kluber's just going to try to throw strike one. Maybe got a little too much of the plate. It was a good fastball away. Maybe up a little bit, but he was waiting for it. And gets a base hit, so they're off to a good start. Now Matt Duffy. Tampa's third baseman. Yeah. With Tampa, not a lot of household names coming through that lineup that uh, people would know. But Duffy, a guy that used to play with the Giants. He's hitting 298 on the year. Multiple hit games in three of his last four and five of his last seven. He also likes singles, 107. He's gone over 200 at bats without a home run. So that would be a pretty good number two hitter. Probably could hit that hole between first and second as a right handed hitter. But Kluber falls behind him 3 0. Kluber on the year, he is averaging 14.6 pitches per inning, which is the best in all of baseball. DeGrom is right behind him. Blocked them on four pitches. So Tampa off to a good start here. First two aboard, nobody out, and G Man Choi coming to the plate. Kevin Cash, just 40 years old. Already in his fourth season at the helm. Choi a little late on the fastball swings through it. At the start of the year Kevin Cash was still the youngest manager in baseball. There have been a few changes along the way this year so I'm not sure if that's still intact or not but. Bottom line is he's done a very good job and sometimes as we have come to learn when leading a sports team age is not necessarily important it's how one carries themselves uh, you know deal with individuals you know you and I remember when Eric Wedge took over he was a young manager but he didn't act young he didn't seem like a young guy. And some people are just, you know, they have that, you know, maturity that does not necessarily equate to how old they are. Swung on and missed Corey Kluber. Boy, you talk about flipping the switch. He walked Duffy on four pitches and strikes out Choi on three. Yeah, he went. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this was a great uh, sequence. Uh, he went at him with the fastball and then comes back with a couple of very good sliders. Or, there it is. To get two and gets him to chase that one. So he wastes no time, gets the first out. Tommy Pham came over in a trade from the St. Louis Cardinals. Cost the uh, Rays an outfielder and a couple of minor league pitchers. And whatever it was, Arch uh, Kluber quickly made the in game adjustment. He locked in, didn't he? I'll tell you, after four straight pitches, I don't know whatever it was mechanically, if there was anything, but uh, he found something. He's been doing nothing but throwing strikes. What he'd like is a ground ball to end it. 
And it would be a very nice tidy inning. Just a bit outside and families off. Tommy Pham came from St. Louis. Justin Williams, who Tampa traded. Williams had been acquired by the Rays from Arizona. He was a former second round pick of the Diamondbacks. One thing about Tampa, they they rarely sit on a player. They are I know. wheeling and they dealing have. sometimes at breakneck pace. Two balls and two strikes with two on and one out. Pham has been on fire hitting in five straight games. Hits one on the hole. Ramirez cuts it off, goes to second. There's one on to first. How do you like them apples? In inning ending, double play. 5 4 3, they go around the horn, and the Indians are coming to bat. Last now, who is the Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher? He has just turned 25 last week. He came over from the Pittsburgh Pirates along with Austin Meadows for Chris Archer, who they unloaded before the trading deadline on the 31st. And he's getting his opportunity here with the Rays. He's six foot eight, one of the tallest pitchers that they've had in Rays history. Actually, Neiman was six foot nine. Tito's starting lineup brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Frankie Lindor leading it off. Michael Brantley bats second, then it's Jose Ramirez. Edwin Yonder Melky in the middle. Jason Kipnis, Jan Gomes, Greg Allen rounded out. And here we go, Tyler Glasnow. He can let it fly 97 miles an hour. And Lindor caught in between on a 98 mile an hour fastball, but that looked like it had a little movement. Well, he can, uh, his ball will run. Looks like a, a, a slider or cutter that's coming in. He's six foot eight. I mean, it, it, that arm reaches all the way out. Slows it down, and Lindor jolts one to center, but not deep enough. Kiermeyer shy of the warning track, one down. Let's set the uh, Rays defense for you. In the outfield will be Fam and left uh, uh, Kiermaier in center. Bowers is over and right on the infield. Duffy is at third. Adamas is at second. Wendell or at short. Wendell is at second. Crone is at first. Sucre behind the plate. So Michael Brantley coming up. And a low fastball out of the zone. Brantley in his last 10 games is hitting 349. 
And a 337 mark over the 25 games played this month alone. It's a shame that injuries stole as much time away from Brantley in the last couple of years as they did because what we've seen this year and remember there were a lot of voices in the offseason openly critical of what are the Indians doing right. bringing him back right. But what you fail to remember is that when he is healthy as he has been this year and he's worked extremely hard this didn't just magically happen. Uh, is that he's just so consistently he's good at the plate. One of the best hitters in the game. That same approach day in and day out. Tops that foul. Well, Glass now, you know, I think he's made five starts here with the with Tampa. He was pitching out of the pen in Pittsburgh. You can see he still pitches out of the stretch. Love to see if you could get base runners on what you could do because he's a big tall arms and leg guy and look like he may have a, a you know a slow move to the plate. Yes he did. And that's where this guy can be tough. He's throwing 98 and then he can go off speed pitches. And they haven't seen him yet too so that obviously plays a role in this. Andre well the one thing about last now that was talked about by Ty Van Berkeley is this he says yeah he gets up to about 100 he can throw in the mid 90s but the curve and slider almost look alike they blend together at times he still pitches like he's out of the bullpen and Archie were talking about this It's more of a cutter than anything else that will throw occasionally against lefties they'll throw change ups but they basically said they have to keep him in the strike zone and get an eye on him because as you guys said they've not seen him to know that. well the just from the swing that Lindor took on a fastball and then Brantley took on that breaking ball um, it's tough to pick up the spin I could tell you right now <laughs> Look at that, you go down to eighty two. And then you figure he's he's throwing that fastball at 98. So 16 mile an hour difference. That's incredible. Fouled right back. And, this, and that fastball that he threw right there that could have some run to it like a cutter. And it's it's natural. You see how he was behind the baseball and those fingers just let it go and it it's going to have a little run to it. It's not going to be straight. Down in the dirt. I don't know if I'd want to be a catcher tonight with this guy because he looks like he can spike a few out in front. And Sucre, look at he's taking a deep breath already. And we're the third hitter into the game. And here it is the same thing. That breaking ball, you're sitting here looking for the fastball. And the breaking ball gets you to commit. You can't hold up. And it's a 1 2 3 first for Cleveland.
second inning. On an absolutely beautiful holiday weekend, Friday night, getting things started in downtown Cleveland. We had the air show, Blue Angels, giving us a lot of entertainment this afternoon. Today. Swing and a miss by Jake Bowers. Obviously, we're we're kind of partial, but. I think it would be tough to beat the Cleveland Air Show. It's been a tradition for so many years. When we're here, we thoroughly enjoy it, and we have some buildings that are blocking us a little bit. Yeah, but they they always know when the Indians are here because they they tend to buzz the tower oh, yeah, a few they times. Will. We had the we had some fly-ins today, and uh, the, that the, the, they're just practicing there. That was earlier in the afternoon. How beautiful was that? Yeah, and when they. When they pass overhead, you know, every part of your body vibrates and shakes. These things are so loud. Wasn't it Randy Johnson at the old stadium? He literally fell off the mound. Well, he probably had to duck as tall as he was. <laughs> it was like the terminal tower on the mound. Here's the 2 2. And Kluber gets Bowers looking for his second strikeout of the night. Well this one is this top of the zone it looked like it was top or maybe a little bit off the plate and I don't think Bowers like that call. That's uh, if Kluber gets that pitch it's it could be a tough night. That looked like it might have been a ball with off the dish. But when you're a young hitter you're going. Now I know why he won a couple of Cy Youngs. You make pitches like that all night. Yes indeed. Kevin Cash is their manager. I would expect to see Tampa swinging early in the count here off Kluber. He's been around. He knows Kluber. He knows how he what he likes to do. And already they've had four swings on the first pitch. He doesn't have as many strikeouts as he did last year, but uh, you know he's still getting. Very efficient outs on three pitches or less. And he's a little craftier now. Kind of threw the bat at it yeah. and it pops it to center field. Take the sting right away from him. Two away. Take a look at our Kia drive to success. Indian starters in the month of August. Have gone 15 and 5 with an ERA of under 3. Punching out 188 and walking just 38. Yeah, they've been dealing. That's why the Indians 18 and 9 in the month of August. They've been very good. Their best month of the year by far. Kevin Kiermeyer. Left handed hitting center fielder. Last nine games, all of them he has started, he's hit 333 with a couple of doubles and a couple of triples. He's got tremendous speed. The only issue for Kiermeyer is staying on the field. He plays with such reckless abandon, similar to what we saw when Grady Sizemore was in Cleveland. That it's taken its toll on him with significant injuries in each of the last three seasons. But this year, he's been able to stay on the field, and that's certainly helped Kevin Cash. I mean, if a manager can write your name in the lineup every day, 
that's more valuable to him than making a few diving stops. He'd rather have you well, available. Yeah. yeah, you're more valuable to your team between the lines. But you know, you, you mentioned it, the, his style of play and the way he plays with reckless abandon. And you're going to get hurt eventually diving or running into the walls. And he has. He, he had a bad leg issue. I think it was last year. It's hit pretty well to right field. Back goes Melky Cabrera, and he's shy of the warning track. And Tampa Bay goes one, two, three. We are scoreless, middle of the second. It will be Edwin Encarnacion to lead it off for Cleveland. Edwin has a hit in five straight games. And he was going to try to square up that 96 mile an hour fastball, but couldn't do it. Well, I'll tell you what, he, uh, Glassnob. He breezed through that first inning. Lindor had a breaking ball to center field, and that was it. The other two guys, Brantley and Ramirez, didn't touch him. 98 outside, one and one. Encarnacion, 91 runs batted in on the year. Steady Eddie. Bounced in front of the plate. Two and one. Since coming off the disabled list, he's played eight games, nine for 28 with three homers, 10 runs batted in. Yeah, once that hand got better, he's able to swing the bat with two hands. <laughs> what a difference. <laughs> that makes. Oh, there's that breaking ball, and it's a knee See, buckler. The, the, the pitch before that, he bounced it like five feet out in front, and then that one, he throws a dandy. Look at this. Here's the curveball. He's just going to spin it 12 to 6. Rotation on it. And that's a buckler. Edwin met that one head on, drills it to deep left field, and leaping up, making the catch on the warning track is Tommy Pham for out number one. <laughs> Pham not all that familiar with progressive field, maybe jumped a little too soon, but. Understandable until you get your bearings. Yeah, you're right. New ballpark for him. Now Yonder Alonso. Alonso with a hit in each of his last two games. Takes a high fastball, 1 0.
Boy, the thump of that glove, it just sounds hard. 98. And he slows it down. Two balls and a strike at six foot eight. Only Jeff Neiman and Mark Hendrickson at six nine are taller pitchers in Tampa Rays history. Yeah, we remember those guys. Also, local product Adam Russell right. from North Olmsted. He was six eight. He pitched for Tampa. Yes, you're right. Hendrickson, though, he was six nine. Same. He didn't throw as hard, you know. He was this <laughs> guy. Yeah, this spectrum. guy's got about 10, 10 miles an hour faster. Maybe not quite that much, but in the dirt and a full count. See what he throws here, three two. I, I would have to assume it's going to be in a good fastball. It was. He popped him up. Foul ground might be playable. Let's see. C.J. Crone reaches in. No sir. Now maybe if Glasnow was over there, he might have been able to reach in and get that. <laughs> yeah, with the length of his arms, you're right. Three two pitch down and in ball four. So the Indians have their first base runner with one out Melky Cabrera coming up. We'll take a look at our storylines brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Jason Kipnis last four games has been. On fire nine out of 15 seven runs batted in big home run yesterday. Yeah Tyler Glass now the one thing about him is. Look at that, you can run on him. The running game is he ain't a big guy. But they don't have the right guy on first now to run. No, and that's a double play ball. One. Two complete. No score in Cleveland.
Willie Adamas will lead off for Tampa. And the first pitch is down low. Corey Kluber has retired five in a row. Yeah, they got to him early. He gave up the first pitch base hit. Four straight balls to Duffy and then locked in. Bouncing ball right at Lindor. Big hopper. He'll throw him out. One down. Well, MLB at bat is your number one Indians app. Catch every moment with Indians home screen icons and features like the MLB game of the day, in game highlights, news, live radio broadcasts, and much more. Download MLB at bat today. There's Joey Wendell. I'm sorry, Jesus Sucre with uh, Joey Wendell on deck. Sucre last 11 games, just three hits and 27 at bats. They traded Wilson Ramos, did Tampa Bay. Tell you what, they they made a lot of moves this year, and even with the trades they've made. They still continue to win. They're playing great baseball. Yes. That is that's the incredible thing about them down there. You know if those guys if Tampa. Had a new ballpark or had something where people could go watch and play besides the one they're playing and I think that's the next step baseball has to do is get them a new. Facility. They're last in the league with the attendance 14,000. Arch it's funny you say that in the beginning we were in spring training and there was a huge story out of St. Pete. And it reminds me of the Oakland situation. Every right. time we go there, what do we read in the paper? Yeah. New stadium coming. Right. They are talking about it in the beginning of the season. I don't know where that's led, but there are a lot of people down in that area that feel the same exact way that you Those do. Those are the two places that, that need right. new ballparks. And if they get them, and, and look at how the teams are doing. They're both doing very right. well. Right. Well, Tito even said, and obviously he loves Kevin Cash, but he says when you consider who they have to play 19 times in that American League right. East and to be where they're at. He's doing a whale of a job with what they have. Well, let me tell you, they have the exact same record as the Philadelphia Phillies right now. Today. Wow. The, the same record. The Phillies are three games back, but Tampa's 21 games back in the East. So that's the difference. The Indians have had a great year at home. They're 41 and 25. Tampa Bay's 41 and 24 down in St. Pete. They just haven't played well on the road. But as Tito pointed out earlier on Indians live pregame they're playing the Red Sox and the Yankees 19 times a year and those can be tough matchups now they've had a lot of games against uh, Toronto and Baltimore and they've not been good this year line to first yonder Alonzo snares it two down. Well now Joey Wendell's coming to the plate. Joey Wendell of course was an Indians farmhand. They traded him to Oakland to get Brandon Moss which OK that didn't necessarily work out great for the Indians but they were looking for some pop guy could you know play some first base right. help out left handed power right. Oakland turned around and basically traded him for not much at all. So I mean it, in one regard you look at it and say well. And who knows if Joey Wendell keeps this up he's he's playing great right now he's hitting almost 300. He's got four consecutive multi game multi hit games. If you go back to July 1st he's batted 346 since then. Well some guys are late bloomers he wasn't going to get a chance here. So that's why we traded him in Oakland you know it was just maybe a guy that doesn't stand out doing any one thing superbly but. He fits in in Tampa at least since he's been there. Yeah Tampa. It was the old player to be named later. And they sent him a guy named Jonah Heim. Who? <laughs> he's in the minors. I mean who knows. But it doesn't sound like it was. Much of a trade. But this could work out really well for Tampa. As many of their trades have over the years. Corey Kluber has set down eight straight. 
We are scoreless middle of the third. And Jason Kipnis, yesterday's hero, will lead it off for Cleveland. I think everybody's happy for Kipnis that he's finally found a hot spill, a hot streak, and he's riding it. Well, good for him. Stay hot. Big three run home run yesterday, difference in the ball game. Well, this guy will test you, though, because the stuff we've seen from Tyler Glass now is pretty filthy. But he's gone in his last 18 plate appearances. He hasn't had a swing and a miss. And Glass now burns one in there. 98 on the inside corner for strike one. Pops this one up. Left field. In comes Tommy Pham. And that'll be out number one. Well, we're joined now by Ken Rosenthal of Fox Sports, who will be working the game tomorrow here at Progressive Field between the Indians and the Rays. And this is a busy time of year for you because we always think of the July 31st trading deadline as being the end-all, be-all, but that's not true. Matt, you're so right. And it sneaks up on me every year, and I kind of get caught <laughs> by surprise, and I shouldn't. July 31st, you expend a lot of energy to get to that point when you're in my job. But there is... A great deal of activity today has been for the past week or so and I expect one big trade tonight Donaldson I don't know where he's going I have no idea but I expect that he'll get moved so that means you're in for a long night and even when the game's over you got to go till midnight that's correct Rick and probably beyond if the Donaldson thing is interesting from a writing standpoint I'll write about it and then we'll work figure out tomorrow tomorrow <laughs> you guys know how it works yeah I want to get to Donaldson in a second but first our producer Jim Murphy was relating and I had forgotten that was it a year ago that Justin Verlander was dealt to the Astros by the Tigers and it was literally right before the stroke of midnight. Yes. A couple of ticks before midnight and it's a great story and it's been told a few times now. Mark Feinstein of MLB.com had an oral history of it this week and it went right down to the wire as these things often do. There have been a right. couple of July 31st trades like that. And this one was the same and obviously it changed really baseball history if you think about it the Astros won their first World Series title with Verlander playing a huge role. And as I understand it it's not that there's a, a trading deadline but if you want that player to be active for the postseason he has to be traded by midnight tonight. Right. right? And I know a lot of fans Matt and Rick get upset because they say to me on Twitter hey wait. <laughs> was it July 31st the deadline? Yeah. Yes, that was the non waiver deadline. But we have in baseball this curious, weird August waiver period where trades can still be made if players clear waivers or if they're claimed that a trade can be worked out. And the deadline now for that particular period, it really doesn't change. But by 
midnight tonight, a player has to be in a team's organization to be eligible for the postseason. That's the whole thing. Right. Now, is it a deadline, a hard deadline in either case? Not really. It just changes. Well, Ken, thanks for stopping by. I know you're extremely busy. Uh, have fun tomorrow. Will do. Thanks, guys. All right. Ken Rosenthal's on the call tomorrow as the Indians and the Rays will be on FS1. But he's going to get back to work because the trading deadline, the clock is ticking. Stay tuned later in the game for our Miller Lite Hold True moment. And enjoy your holiday weekend. Enjoy it responsibly. Be safe out there. Matt Duffy walked his first time up. You know, it's funny, Arch. Uh, most of America, certainly most of the folks in northeastern Ohio, Look forward to Labor Day. It's a big deal. Labor Day weekend. You get a day off of work. You don't have to go into to the workplace. You don't have to go to your job, wherever it may be. You and I are so fortunate, so lucky, so blessed. Andre's in the same category. We've never really had a regular, like, real office job to go to. So Labor Day is just that, that, kind of part of the season. Yeah, it is. Well, like Easter, like all, all the other holidays, but it's okay. You know, it's the last, I guess, weekend you'd call it for the summer. So to speak is what Labor Day yeah. is. But kids are back in school and everything gets starts getting back into you don't want to talk about it, the winter time, but you know, the autumn and it's a beautiful time of year though. Center field, Greg Allen drifting back. Well, even for me, even before I got into baseball, I mean, I always work at sport. Labor Day weekend is is one of the greatest sports weekends because you got baseball starting to heat up. Pennant races are starting to really yeah. come. You got high school football kicking off. Pro football's right there. College football, there's just so much going on. If you're a tennis fan, you got the U.S. Open every year is this weekend in, in Flushing Meadows. So it's just, it's always a great sports Special weekend. Special time of year, yeah. yeah. Matt, it is one of the best times of the year, and you're right. We're completely lucky to do what we do. But I got to tell you the first rule that Rick Manning told me when I took this job four years ago. Oh, I don't know if we know. Can we air this? <laughs> there are no holidays in the summer. <laughs> you just that's come to true. work until they tell it's you. It's just to another call. day. Yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> did I tell you that, Andre? <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. I, I think it was Easter. I was, I was telling you the truth, wasn't I? Yes, it was my new Easter reach ritual to yeah. tell my family. Uh, Mr. Manning said there's no <laughs> holidays. Put that ham away. <laughs> One ball, one strike for G-Man Choi. Struck out his first time up. And Kluber's pitch sails wide. One, two, one, two. 
Choi batting 340 over his last 14 games. And that misses outside just as the previous pitch had three and one. Same spot. Second walk issued by Kluber. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Charlie Morton goes down for Houston and another pitcher lost for the Oakland A's. Albert Pujols has surgery on his knee. He's done for the year. Oh, Arch, can Oakland hang on? To the wild card? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Seems yeah, I like think they can. Seattle's behind them. Just seems They're like playing Seattle now. One injury after another. Yeah, well, they just uh, acquired another reliever today. I saw that. That's true. From Texas. Yes, they can. Corey they can Garrett. hang on. Yeah. Yes, yeah. They, they sure did. Uh, yes, they can. They've they've been on such a, a good run for so long. It's tough to sustain exactly what they were doing. And Arch, you know, I love them. But their schedule and Seattle's schedule now with their injuries, yeah, it may get close. You know, they, they you know, Seattle and Oakland's playing this weekend. I think Seattle sees Baltimore at home, the Yankees, and then San Diego. They will see Oakland again, and they'll see Texas for four. They still see Texas seven more times. So it, it may get close, hmm. you know, in the wild oh, card yeah, race. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt it. But it, isn't it funny how injuries are playing out in that AL West completely with the pitchers? All the big three teams have all had big starters yeah. going on in the last two, three weeks. It's a long year, fellas. You know, people, it, it happens. I think the Indians uh, five and a half back of Houston yes. for the second seed. That that might be tough because the Astros look like they're taking off again. The one two. Oh that looked like a good pitch. Looked like he might have had strike three but did not get the call. You know he took a couple of breaking balls in his last at bat. That's the comeback fastball on the outside part of the plate. And he just took that one. That was a tough pitch to take. That one was closer than the breaking balls were in his first at bat. But he got him the ground into the double play. And then he went after that breaking ball. You know, Oakland could be doing something like what Tampa's doing now with their starters being out. They could that's why they're acquiring so many relievers. Yep. They may be end up doing what Tampa's gonna do down the stretch. Who knows? The 2 2 pitch. Round ball up the middle. Lindor can't get it. Choi does not run well. He'll stop at second. And the Rays, for the second time tonight, have two on in an inning. Well, I'll tell you, Fam had enough on this ball. It had enough topspin to get by. He hit it hard. Strong guy. Gets it on the ground, and this one just sneaks under the glove of Lindor into center field. Second hit for the Rays. And Jake Bowers called out on strikes his first time up to the plate. Jake Bowers is another one of those guys that was. Acquired by the Rays in a, in a major trade. Came from the Padres. And it was, a, I think it was a three team trade that also involved the Washington Nationals. There's so many names I can't even sort it all out. But I can tell you that Steven Souza Jr., Ryan Hannigan, Will Myers. Trey Turner were all part of that trade. That was one of those uh, just after the winter meetings deals. Yeah, I got to tell you about these Rays though. Uh, you come back since the last time that these two teams met only four players are on tonight's active roster for the Rays. How many? Four. Four. Since the last time we played these. Guys. Which was last. Uh, it was uh, let me think uh, August 13th. Yeah. So that's it Four 
Wow. They got a couple guys on the disabled list, but they're not available. That is the very definition. So you want to talk about turnover? turnover? Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I don't think anybody else can boast. Not even close to that. Now the 3 1. Well, you said it before the game. When you sit down and you start filling out the lineup card, you look at the, the Tampa roster, not the roster, but they're starting nine yeah. today. And you're looking at those guys and you're saying, it's like a patchwork of players from other organizations, trades, and guys that you've really never heard of. Other than Kevin Kiermaier is the one guy on that, that Tampa lineup that sticks out because, okay, there's a guy you've definitely heard of. Well, Gomez, yeah, but now it's up to Kevin Cash to get them to blend together and yeah. play together. 3 2. Strike three called. Oh, Bowers was up 3 0. And the last pitch, a fastball riding the inside corner the whole way for strike three. Let's take Two a down. look at the sequence. It's six pitches. Watch this. Little slider, good pitch. It was called low. One down out of the strike zone, the two seamer. There's that little cutter in. All right, now you're down three, and they weren't bad pitches. He gets one there. Then he comes back in with a cutter inside, and is this the comeback fastball? And that's a good pitch. Great pitch. He thought he just threw the cutter to set that pitch up, where this one ended up coming back over, and he locked him up. That very nice sequence. Now C.J. Crone, former Angel, lied to center his only time up. Fastball upstairs. Fly ball left field. Brantley is there. And the inning is over. So Corey Kluber. Pitches around a couple of base runners here in the fourth, and we are still scoreless. Indians have seen Tyler Glass now one time through the order. What are the returns, Andre? Not a lot of conversation. You guys said it perfect when we first were talked about this. A lot of guys coming back, even asking me, "What is the movement on those pitches? What's coming out of his hand?" Now the cutter is a pitch to the lefties that's been bothering him most, guys. They said it's hard to pick up and it's cutting inside on him, and obviously it's coming at 98, 96 miles an hour. The other thing that stands out, John Parada, who's based out of Pittsburgh and watched him a lot in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. right. he's a writer. 
He said, it's amazing. He said, tweeted this. He goes, it's hard to believe he's the same guy. Pitching with confidence and pounding his own. Never saw this in Pittsburgh. Well, you know why? They were trying to get him to throw sinkers. Sinkers yeah. and sliders. That's what they do there. That's true. They're trying the same thing with Chris Archer now. I was going to say, so you're saying it's like the Charlie Morton situation. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what, that, what Houston did. When they got him, they wanted him to throw the four-seamer and throw the curveball. Well, that's what this kid is doing now. They didn't let him do it in Pittsburgh. Lindor, big swing, comes up empty. When you have 98, how do you want him to sink it? And you know, when, when Andre's talking about that cut, it's almost like a natural, you know, it's, it's just how he grips the ball. Maybe he's got long fingers and that ball comes out and that ball just takes off. But boy, that, that I mean, he can slow that curveball down to 83 and he's throwing 98. Well, the funny thing is, I always remember going way back, Jason Davis, a pitcher the Indians yeah. had, who had a great sinker. And then he started throwing 97 and he lost his sinker. He lost the movement. Yeah. Yes, he did. And became very hittable after that. But this guy's a little different animal. He's got a really good secondary pitch that plays well off that 98 mile an hour fastball. There it is. Lindor got a piece. Yeah. We sent along some birthday wishes. Betty Jones of Rocky River turning 102 tonight. Betty, very happy birthday to you. Ken Rosenbaum of Toledo is 76. Happy birthday to you. Jules Braun of Orange is 86. Chuck Smick of North Ridgeville is 83. It's a busy night tonight, folks, in the birthdays. Yeah, we also have, we're not going to be televising tomorrow, but Ron and Marilyn Cohen are going to be celebrating their 61st anniversary tomorrow and they have been Indian season ticket holders for 60 years. Wow. They didn't get married in the ballpark did they. Yeah oh, Frankie knew it breaking ball again. It's that secondary pitch you start looking for that 98. And. He just gets guys locked up. See there it goes out of your frame there out of your picture. And it comes down into the glove watch this there it comes. And it just locks you up. That's this guy's going to be tough to square up unless you, you catch up to one of his fastballs that he gets down in your zone. Let's put it this way it looks like it can be a very uncomfortable at bat. Some guys you go you can get into that batter's box and you're not really worried but they've got to get it started if they want to hit his fastball. And then once you get it started and then he throws a curveball you have no chance. Bounce to first right at CJ Crone. Two down. Time for a game break here's Al Pulaski. All right Matt Rick let's head out to Washington D.C. where Milwaukee taking on the Nationals Travis Shaw goes yard for the 27th time this year in the first inning and speaking of Nationals and Brewers Gio Gonzalez traded to Milwaukee today as well Brewers up 4 one fourth inning big night for them as they're up in the game they're up another player too well he just walk to the other side and the other do. clubhouse right and on. Just change trade your bags clubs. yep maybe he pitches tonight who knows. How about the night Kristen Yelich had last was it last night six, six hits? for six yes. and a hit for the cycle unbelievable. And kind of a crazy game too. It's on like. one zero pitch. What, like Thirteen to twelve or something. Yeah, like and that. I think there were some calls and disputes and back and a lot of just a lot of action. Jose Ramirez struck out swinging in the first inning. When you've hit a buck 67 in your last 10 games, this might not be the guy you want to have to jump in the box and face. But one thing we know about Jose Ramirez, he can turn a fastball around regardless of the velocity. Yes, he can. Now, will he get that more than back to back times other than a show pitcher 2 0? In off the plate, 3 and 1. 
Well, he'll be loading up for Bear right here. Yeah, but then if you if, if you happen to see that spinner, you better not start your swing. He got the fastball. He hit it to center, but didn't quite square it. And the Indians go one, two, three, and Tyler Glass now spinning a shutout through four, and we are scoreless in Cleveland. Baseball is brought to you by the 2019 Kia Sorento, the perfect getaway vehicle. Visit KiaDealers.com to learn more. By Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. And by your Chevy Network dealers. Visit ClickChevy.com. Chevrolet. Find new roads. If you like pitching and good pitching, you've come to the right place. You got a doozy going on here tonight. Kevin Kiermaier leading off for Tampa fifth inning bottom third of the Rays order do up Corey Kluber has given up two singles. He has walked two and struck out three. His counterpart Tyler Glass now through four innings has allowed one base runner a walk to Yonder Alonso in the second inning he has struck out four tonight. Kiermaier can't catch up to the high heat it's 0 and 2. Oh, just missed outside. Did he offer? He did not. Look at that. Just a beautiful night. One two pitch. Foul. As Arch pointed out, the Tampa roster is completely turned over in just a year, other than four players. So you know this isn't on the mind of their players but maybe some longtime Rays fans are well aware of the fact that they their worst record against any American League opponent is against the Indians Tampa oh, right. has lost almost 60 percent of their games or actually more than 60 percent of their games all time against the Indians they have the worst record against Cleveland 58 and 93 and here in Cleveland the Indians have won 50. And lost just 25 against Tampa all time. Yeah, and Tampa's had some good teams down there for some years. Oh, absolutely. You know, they've had some very good pitchers come down and through there. They had a really good run during the Joe Madden era, as you point out, with the great starting pitching. Yeah, they've they've been through it all. Beat the Indians in a one game wild card here in 2013. Carlos Gomez. 
One of the few veterans they have on that club. This is their 20th year since coming into the American League. Man, that's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. 1998. It sure was. 20 years. Wade Boggs at the end of his career. Oh, yeah. He got his uh, 3,000 3, off uh, left handed pitcher, Mr. Haney. And Dwayne Stats has been doing their television since day one. That's hit hard. Deep center, back goes Greg Allen. He runs it down. Well, 12,500 fans will receive a 1948 Indians Road jersey tomorrow night. The Tribe will uh, continue this series with the Rays. Get to the game early. Come on out, enjoy $2 domestic beers uh, pregame in the district. Stay after for a big band Rat Pack fireworks show. That's presented by Wayside Furniture. You can get your tickets by using the ballpark app or by going to Indians.com. Willie Adamas. Four years ago at the trading deadline, Adamas went to the Tampa Bay Rays in the David Price deal. And now Tampa really feels like they've got a good young player that's ready to emerge. He'll be 23 in just a couple of days. Actually, he shares a birthday with my partner. Not that. Oh, he's uh, he, he's only 23, and he was traded for Price, and he's still well. That's pretty good. That's why it's tough to judge trades. Exactly. You know what I'm saying when they say, "Oh, you got rid of David Price," what they said of the Detroit, and mm -hmm. uh, and you know, here's four years later, he was with Detroit, Toronto, now with Boston, and this kid's just starting to come and make a name for himself. But he's no match for Corey Kluber at this point in his career. Four strikeouts for the two-time Cy Young Award winner. And there are two down here in the fifth. Come out to Public Square on Sunday, and you'll see some amazing vehicles at the Cars in Cleveland Spectacular presented by the Bernie Marino Company, sponsored by A.B. Bernstein. Music, food, and activities for the whole family from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Two down, Jesus Sucre, the batter. He hit a line drive, but he was going for the opposite field, and he hit it right into the tracks of Yonder Alonso, his first time up. Well, if you're facing Kluber as a right handed hitter, I think that would be a pretty good approach. Try and Shoot him the other way. You will see a lot of cutters, breaking balls, and even the fastballs away from you. Swung out and missed. It's one and two. He goes to Yonder Alonso again. This time he bounces one to him. But again, Alonso equal to the task. Still no score. We're halfway through.
Tampa Bay pitching this year. The starters are a game under 500. But look at that bullpen. And look at the innings they have long. It is amazing. 655 and a third innings, more than their starters. And the Indians bullpen has pitched 293 innings less than the Rays, which I, I think is incredible. And those guys have held their own, man. They've really done a nice job. You look at them overall in the league, and they're, what, fourth in the league in the ERA? Edwin Encarnacion will lead off for Cleveland here in the bottom of the fifth. Actually, they're third in the league. To center field. One down. Start dead batteries with NOCO. No score. One out here in the bottom of the fifth, and Yonder Alonso coming up. He drew a walk his first time up. Yeah, Yonder, the only guy to reach base for the Indians. Came in the form of a walk back in the second inning. Here's a ground ball to short. And Adamas throws him out two away. That's going to bring up Melky Cabrera. And he banged into that double play in the second inning. And that's why Tyler Glass now has faced the minimum so far tonight. With two outs here in the fifth, and he's about to make his 50th pitch of the night. Yeah, I mean, he's had three, uh, uh, excuse me, seven outs on three pitches or less. You know, you, you go up there the first time, you see how hard he's throwing, you're thinking, okay, I got to get, I got to get something early against this guy because he can put you away with his uh, off speed pitches. There Round it is. Ball in the hole. The first hit of the night is off the bat of Melky Cabrera with two outs here in the fifth inning. But for a guy making just his sixth start of the year, this has been pretty impressive for Tyler Glasnow. Well, I'll tell you, the, the thing of it is now, you try to get out and, and pull his fastball, you're going to get in trouble. This is where Melky stayed on it and hit it the other way. And it was a fastball and it was sort of middle in, and he gets the first hit for the Indians. And brings up Jason Kipnis who fly to left. But not a guy you expect up. to see a, a steal a base here is, is Cabrera. Not saying he can't. He hasn't tried one yet though this year. Oh well, he's got a little slide step to him. Goodness. Great clip of the game from yesterday. The home run hit by Jason Kipnis. You can see Mitch Garver drop his head as soon as Kipnis made contact. He knew it was gone. And a huge three run homer for Kip and the Indians. As they would go on to take the series from Minnesota. Popped up foul. This will be out of play. The one one. Kipnis is not happy with it. Take another look. He'd be the judge. Well, it's a low dart, and you know, I may have to agree with him on that one. Right now Tampa Bay is so thrilled with the trade. They knew Chris Archer they like they watched him grow up they knew what kind of pitcher he was but at this point in his career 
the Tampa people are looking at this like the Bartolo Colon trade for the Indians because you get this kid who's pitching glass now who can throw it. Blueberry through a battleship as they used to say talented outfielder Austin Meadows is a triple A close to the big leagues there goes Cabrera Beautiful. balls in the dirt and a stolen base standing up for Melky it's his first of the year and the Indians get a man in the scoring position for the first time tonight well, and Melky had a good jump and he just picked the right pitch yeah they also got a hard throwing reliever the old player to be named later was a guy by the name of Shane Boz who they say is another guy throws with great velocity so three players for Archer who some people was down were privately was whispering might be on the yes. decline in right. his career. Well he was he was he was in a rut he was turning into a slider ball pitcher slider 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 everything and he wanted to get the strikeouts and he lost a little bit of his fastball pulls the string on him and glass now five one hit shutout innings of work here tonight this game remains scoreless in Cleveland. On FS1, John Carlos Stanton and the Yankees take on the Detroit Tigers. Then it's the Rays and the Indians right here or right there on FS1. It all starts at 3.30 Eastern or you can stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Check your local listings for Fox Sports 1 in your area. Corey Kluber, 82 pitches on the night. 51 of those have been strikes. First time through the lineup, 38 pitches. Second time through, 44. First time through the lineup, one walk, one hit allowed, struck out two. Second time through the lineup, one walk, one hit allowed, struck out two. <laughs> okay. So you're calling him consistent? <laughs> yes, sir. He pitches like Brantley hits. Yeah. Same thing every day. Not a whole lot of emotion. But he's out there and he can get the job done consistently. The 0 2 showing off his 5 o'clock shadow, too. He just shaved before the game. <laughs> Sent along a couple more birthday wishes. Ron Vickery of Bellevue is 88. Frank Duplay of Freedom is 70. Do you have any more? Chad Carter in Pierpont, Ohio, celebrating his 30th birthday tonight. We got a lot of them. And let's not forget about our boy Zap. No, that's uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we no, won't, we'll we won't send it out today. Yeah. Happy Zap. birthday, Zap. How are you down there, buddy? How's the, how's the fishing going? I would think by now he's off the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, you don't know for sure. You never know. Can you fish in he's the off, dark? He's <laughs> off the water and out of what? <laughs> He's on dry dock. <laughs> Toyota mid-game summary. A lot of pitching. 
and really good pitching. We just detailed it from Corey Kluber's standpoint. He's been outstanding as per usual. And this young man, Tyler Glass, now impressive. First time we've seen him. He was uh, pitching out of the Pittsburgh bullpen. Tampa traded for him. They've made him a starter, and he's gone out and authored five one hit shutout innings tonight, striking out five so far. This has been really a, a, a terrific matchup. Matt Duffy walked in the first, fly to center in the fourth. And look, I don't know if you had a chance to uh, listen before the game because you were busy preparing. But uh, one of the things that Tito said before the game to me tonight was that he really believes, all kidding aside, he thinks Kevin Cash is the American League Manager of the Year. Well, it's hard to argue with it. I mean, when all things perspective, nobody thinks about this team. They really don't. I told you they have the same record as the Phillies. You know, people look at, as Kluber go, goes ahead and sets down Duffy. Back to back case. That's a half dozen for Corey. This is a perfect pitch. This is a pitcher's pitch, if you will. Oh, come back fastball. Yeah. Catches the outside corner. See, Marquez has seen it enough now. He's he's getting used to that ball coming back on the dish. But I mean, it, people are going to say, "Well, what about the Oakland A's?" You know, with the Melvin. He's he's a good candidate. Absolutely. I mean, there there are some good candidates, but I certainly give Kevin Cash. Yes, he could. Hey, if he got it, he certainly deserves it. I think when you just factor in everything, the restrictions, the payroll restrictions, playing in the East. But you're right though, Bob Melvin's got a strong case too. I Both mean, those guys have done a tremendous job, I think. They were actually in first place. Now who knows where they'll end up, Oakland. They've well that's true. You still have the month of yeah. September to go, and that's gonna be a big month for a few teams. Now the one one. Bounced it in there. And part of what Terry was saying too, and I, I followed up with a question about some of the unconventional methods that Tampa has used, starting relief pitchers and then going to the starter after you've you know used a bullpen guy to start a game. For those things to be effective, he and his staff, they have to sell the players, they have to get them to buy in, otherwise it doesn't work. There's a ball hit pretty well to deep left. Back goes Brantley. He's got room. And once again, Corey Kluber cruises a one, two, three inning. He strikes out a pair. And for the second time tonight, he has set down eight straight. On Sunday, it's Key Bank Kids Fun Day. You're going to enjoy $2 soda, freeze pops, chips, and nacho cheese from 11 to 2. 
while supplies last. And then after the game, stick around. Kids, you can run the bases. That is presented by Cleveland Clinic Children's. For Cleveland here in the bottom of the sixth, Jan Gomes will lead it off. There have been three hits in the game. Two by Tampa, one by Cleveland. had a great month of August. It's been locked in. Well you're not kidding. Yeah that's the pitch he you know I would I would look for him to hit off of this guy something down in the zone and try and lay off that high fastball by him but so hard to do. Gomes during his six game hitting streak has 11 hits and 23 at bats. He's really had a solid year. Got off to a little slow start, but boy, once now, that's one you can't hold up on. This is one pitch that we've seen a lot of hitters go after. You see that ball, and it goes straight down. And the toughest part for him is he's a good low ball hitter. If that ball is like maybe three inches off the ground, he would be the one guy that could hit it. Yeah. Nobody's hit much of anything off this guy tonight. Well, you're not kidding. Six strikeouts. He's only walked one. So he hasn't given any base runners, and they haven't been able to hit their way on. And you were thinking, okay, if this kid was this good in Pittsburgh, why would they give him up? Well, they, they talked him into becoming a different style pitcher than what he was doing in Pittsburgh. He was sinking it and trying to throw the slider instead of going high fastballs and change the eye level with a good curveball. And he has two excellent pitches like that. Ouch, that was yeah. a thud. I was just going to say, there's he didn't no, move. There's no, I don't think he could. <laughs> I'm, I thought he would just might fall down. 96 <laughs> miles an hour. It's like you just, you just. Did it get that pad? Oh, and part of the leg. Look at the spin coming off of it. Oh, he left it right there. That's going to leave a bruise. Well, the Indians have their second, well, their third base runner of the night. Alonzo with a walk in the second. The single by Melky Cabrera in the fifth, and now the hit batter for Greg Allen here in the sixth. And it brings up Lindor. Well, if he has any feeling in his right leg right now, he, you, you would think he might be off and running. He's stolen 13 out of 14. They've stolen 17 off Glass now. So just a matter of a look or two, and I think he could be running. And we did see before earlier when the Milky was on the base, he, he does he doesn't lift that leg up like when nobody's on. He can slide step you a little bit, but he's still there. there oh, man. Lindor down the line, but foul. He's out in front of it. Boy, he hit it hard. And that's the uh, you know that's what happens. You you got to get that bat started so fast. They're so early to get that fastball that you're just a, just a tad bit out in front of. But I like what you said earlier. Take the Melky approach and don't try to get out in front of it. Because that, then you're susceptible to his good pitch, the curveball. Really susceptible to it. 97 there you go. Foul but back. you see, that's yeah. he, he changed it. Figuring he's going to get something off speed. I mean, you know, it turns into a guessing game. This is the only time they faced him. So now this is the third time through. But this is not an easy at bat. A very uncomfortable at bat, I would think, as a hitter. Now, here comes the cat and mouse game. It looks like it's going to be a fastball. But my guess, 
is you got to think when he's going to throw that curveball and then take off. On the right. Two down. Arch just told you it's Kids Fun Day this Sunday here at the ballpark. It's also Sign Sunday. So stop by the Indians live set before the game. Bring your own sign or make one with the guys, and you can be on our Indians telecast this weekend. Yeah, it's winding down. Let's go. Only a couple of Sundays left to make signs for all you L pals out there. I really need some help with his uh, artistic abilities. Well, we can work with him in the offseason. I think you should just bring Chase every Sunday with him and have Chase make a <laughs> sign for him. That'd be great. He does. He just doesn't tell everybody. Greg Allen going to draw a lot of attention from Tyler Glassnow. I'll tell you one thing: if you're Greg Allen, you're looking for you know like a, a sign, something to tip you off that he's going home. The guy's got size 17 spikes. You can pick those things up as the minute they move. <laughs> Brantley bounces it right into the mitt of CJ Crone, and the Indians are out in the sixth. Still no score as we move on to inning number seven. is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Proud partners of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. No score. Seventh inning. Both starters have been Utterly brilliant so far tonight. Corey Kluber has struck out six. Tyler Glass now has struck out six. Kluber has given up two singles. Glass now has given up just one. And what's really interesting to note is the very last number, the pitch count. Yes. Glass now has done it on just 67 pitches so far. And the reason that's of note is that right now, Tampa. Has gone 423 games since they last saw a starting pitcher complete a game. Yes. That was Matt Andres back in 2016, May 14, 2016. That's the longest drought in American League history. And in that same time frame, Corey Kluber has thrown nine complete games himself. Strike three called. Tommy Pham caught looking. That's seven K's now for Kluber. T-Mobile built for baseball back in the first inning a leadoff single by Joey Wendell followed by a walk to Matt Duffy and you thought uh oh this might be one of those nights yeah. for Corey Kluber. 
Three pitches later, he's got his first out. And then, Neil winning ending double play. Yeah, he just locked it down. And he has been dialed in ever since. You know, and you I, and I said it. Four pitch walk, and then a three pitch strikeout. And then he he needed the double play. He got it. He hasn't looked back since. This will be his 100th pitch of the night. Bullpen is quiet for Cleveland. He's right at 100 and 65 percent strikes. He's at 13 0 2 1 2 counts. Down and in. In addition, Tampa, since they last threw, had a starting pitcher throw a complete game. Corey Kluber has nine. As a staff, the Indians have 16. Yeah, well, the, the, that's how this team is built, starters. Tampa not built that way. But they've had good starters in that same time frame. I mean, Alex Cobb. Yeah. He pitched into the ninth once. We, we just talked about uh, Chris Archer. But yeah. for whatever reason. Tampa just, always goes with their bullpen. Yeah. Always. Now the 3 2. Another punch out for Kluber. He has now struck out eight on the night. I'll tell you what, Bowers has got to be kick, kicking himself. That's the third time he's gone down looking. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, Corey Kluber on slow motion, and you're going to see the cutter right there. Fastball. Ooh, that one's got a little movement, yeah. the two seam fastball. And then, how about a nice little curveball? Down and in. Just the movement on his pitches, man. They go east and west, north and south. Rarely is it straight. And, uh, you know, with the left handers, I've only seen a few change ups tonight. Normally, he throws a lot of change ups to the left handers. Well, he has struck out four of the last five Tampa hitters. And as you pointed out early, it pays sometimes to be aggressive and maybe he hasn't used the changeup just because he hasn't been deep into right. a lot of counts. That's true. Well and he's been typical Corey Kluber. He just throws strikes. He, he keeps you off the barrel of the bat. When you're looking for one thing he's throwing another. Well five of the eight strikeouts have been called third so that gets to your point. You're looking for one. Yes. And it might not be a pitch, but you're looking maybe for a direction, and he's he's crossed him up. And that's what I'm saying. That's why you want to get after him early if you can. Taps it up the first baseline. Foul. You would have to believe this will be his last inning tonight. Well, not that he couldn't keep going. One seventeen, I think, was his high for the year. One hundred seventeen pitches. Yeah, he's, uh, this will be what one oh nine. Right field. Back goes Melky. Onto the warning track and pulls it down. The Rays go one two three. Kluber has struck out eight on the night. No score. Stretch time in Cleveland.
And Ramirez will lead it off. He is 0 for 2. Ramirez struck out on the first fly to center in the fourth. Takes a fastball for a strike. And that's called a strike 0 and 2. The 0-2 bounced in there. Some other anniversaries we got to send along. Happy 61st to Mike and Christine Guzzi of Independence. Seth and Beth Rosenblum of Beachwood celebrating their 60th. Congratulations and happy anniversary. Cody Allen getting loose. Ground ball by Ramirez right at the second baseman Joey Wendell. One down. Be curious to see if Corey Kluber comes back or if it will be Cody Allen. I mean, we talked about it. Well, let me see here. Who we got coming up here? We got Kiermaier. Bottom of the order. Down bottom of third. Seven, eight, nine. It's not necessarily the number of pitches, right? But the fact that he's been pretty much cruising. And he's not really been in trouble. Totally understand. Let's see what happens if they can score a run here. That ball's hammer. Deep center. Kiermaier back. He's out of room. It's out of here. They got you the run. There we go. Now I think you can keep in. <laughs> there it is right there. Edwin's 29th home run of the year. And his fourth home run in his last nine games since he came off the disabled list. Hey, Eddie had his first two at bats. He hit the ball hard the left in his first oh, one, the center in his second one. And he just shot it the other way to stay back on that fastball. And I got to tell you, that's a great job of hitting right there. That you should be smiling. Oh, it's a breaking ball. He stayed out and went and got it. Oh, yeah. I think he might have been looking for that all night, so he might have been licking his chops. Yonder Alonzo, that ball bit him after he fouled it off. Yeah, he stayed back so Didn't he? well on that. Number 29 for Eddie. And Glass now knew it as soon as he heard the contact. Hey, he's got nothing to hang his head out. He made him beat him the other way. He threw the breaking ball. He might have been up a little bit, but I'll tell you what, give some credit to Encarnacion, who hit a terrific uh, pitch. Not many can do it. Now the 0 1. Just missed in off. Tell you what, Glass now has maintained his velocity throughout the game too. 97, 98 all night long. The Parrots are happy. They have flown tonight. The 1 1 up and away. Edwin, six of his 29 home runs now have come in the seventh inning or later. They six oh geez six home runs in the seventh inning in the seventh inning number one on the club so seven is his lucky number and when you lead the team you get special treatment in the dugout. Alonzo walked in the second. He grounded out in the fifth. That's fair behind the bag. Crone with the flip. And Glass now is there two away. Uh, another look at the home run by Encarnacion on Statcast AI powered by AWS. 404 feet. Even over 106 miles per hour. How about the guy making the catch in the front row? Two hands, he cradled it. 
Well done, sir. Well done. Yeah, nothing huh? to it. Yeah, I do this all the time. <laughs> Melky Cabrera pops one up. Foul ground. Duffy makes the catch. We have a run. Edwin Encarnacion's 29th home run of the season. One nothing Cleveland as we go to the eight. Sometimes you can, like you're saying, I mean, I understand your point, but without talking to them, you can almost maybe get in the way. And we, we don't want to do that either. These guys are built to, to do what they're doing. If we saw ill effects, certainly, yeah. But we also don't want them to get in the way because if you pull back too much, then you get into a playoff game and you ask too much and a guy's not ready to do it. So, I, again, my best answer would be communicate. That's Terry Francona when I asked him about the starting pitchers and how they have gone the extra mile. They have pitched deeper in the games this year. They have helped the bullpen. And we just talked about it. Do you push Corey Kluber another inning? He's over 100 pitches already. Or do you go to your bullpen? And Tito said basically the key is communicating, talking to the pitchers. Yep. In between innings, he and Carl Willis were both talking yeah. to Corey Kluber. So whatever the conversation was, led them to the belief. Okay, it's time for Cody. Allen. That's why I say you got to see when they get the run. If they get the run, let's go turn it to the bullpen. Kluber's got a chance to get a win. They may have sent him back out there. Who knows? Cody. That, that one run is big. Cody Allen has the bottom third of the order for Tampa. First ball swinging. Kevin Kiermaier pops one up. Shallow left. Lindor calling everybody off. One down. Our Miller Light hold true moment. Now let's take a look at some of what Corey Kluber had to do here tonight. Well, he was uh, just outstanding. It, it was unbelievable the first five pitches of the game. Base hit and then a walk and then he was lights out. Something clicked mechanically. He, he was on track and throwing nothing but strikes from that point on. 65% strikes for Kluber tonight. 109 pitches in all 70 of them were strikes so. Just another awesome start for the two time Cy Young Award winner and potentially a third in the offing. If, if the Indians hold on here, he yeah. has a chance to win his 17th. The ERA will drop even further. It was already below three. Got 180 strikeouts. Swung on and missed. There you go. Good breaking ball there. That's what you want to see from Cody. First pitch out on a fastball and then a nice breaking ball there. Now the one and the one two. And Willie Adamas pops it foul out of play. Finish up our uh, anniversaries. Butch and uh, Maria Stover of Toledo celebrating their 49th. Joe and Lisa Jeffries of Canton their 45th.
And Charlie and Sue McKenzie of Mansfield, their 43rd. Congratulations, everybody. And we're done for the night. Well done. The one two. Slowed it down. Caught him looking. Willie Adamas, a strikeout victim. Two down. Cody Allen. Has faced two and retired them both. Well, that's the pitch he needs right there. The curveball. When he has that, he's special. It's tough to get to him because he can throw that high fastball. When you don't have command of that pitch there, that makes it awfully tough and turns you into a one pitch pitcher. But he's got to get it back. Going to get a pinch hitter here, Arch. All righty. Kevin Cash will go to his bullpen, and Brandon Lau will bat for Jesus Sucre. And Lau takes a curveball for strike one, and there it is. That's the difference maker when Cody can yep. throw that curveball for strike yep. one, then it sets up the hole at bat. Lau couldn't hold up. He went around on the sure appeal. Did. Chris Siegel concurs, and it's 0 and 2. Brandon Lau has been swinging the bat really well. 357 average in his last 10 games with eight runs batted in. Now the 0 2. Swung out and missed. Oh, Cody Allen. A 1 2 3 8 inning punches out a pair. 1 0 Cleveland. Presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Now back here at Progressive Field where the Indians have a 1-0 lead. The new pitcher is right hander Ryan Stanick. Stanick, a 248 earn run average in 45 games this year. And he's been even better than that since the start of June, giving up just 10 runs in 44 and two thirds innings. Adam Moore takes over behind the plate. And the bottom third of the order due up for Cleveland. Stanick, uh, this guy's a hundred uh, miles an hour. <laughs> is he loose yet? They saw some 98, 97s, 96s from the starter. First pitch from the reliever comes in at a hundred. Kipnis 
takes a 99 mile an hour pitch and pops it to straightaway center. Kiermeyer makes the catch one down. Start dead batteries with NOCO. I mean, one might say, how in the world can you take a guy out throwing as well as Glass now is throwing? He only made 79 pitches through seven innings. But Tampa's not your ordinary club because of the way their bullpen is built. Right. They have eight guys coming out of that bullpen, and that guy did a heck of a job. He only gave up two hits, the one run, and they're saying that's enough. The most he's, he's pitched in a ball game was, what, six innings prior to that. This is only a six start. Yeah, six and two thirds innings at Boston. So, you know, they say, okay, you gave me seven innings. That's enough. You've got to keep this a one run ball game, and they've got the arms to do it. Swung out and missed. One and two. Did he go and the appeal? No, he held up. Ryan Stanek was uh, Tampa's number one pick in the draft five years ago and that made him the 29th overall selection out of the University of Arkansas and I think some people probably wondering you know is he a starter is he a reliever he's done both he's been effective when you can throw a hundred if you have good command you can see where he'd be a handful coming out of the bullpen with an 87 mile an hour slider. He's the first pitcher to have 20 starts and 20 relief appearances in the same season since Esmeo Rogers, a one time Indians pitcher, did it for Toronto in 2013. Gomes towers one on the left side of the infield. Fair catch signal for by Adonis. Two down. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio with Alan Jensen. Highlights, Andre, the whole gang will be here. And if this holds up the way it is, this is this is one of those ball games that it's been very entertaining and exciting to watch. Some people say, oh, I like that nine to eight game. Well, there are nine to eight games that are exciting, and then there are one and nothing this games that are has been a well pitched, well yeah. played game. Pitchers have dominated. Greg Allen punches one in the left field for a base hit. And that stops an 0 for 15 slump for Allen. And the Indians have a two out runner here in the eighth. Cody Allen, really good tonight. Brad Hand up. He'll try to close this one out. All right, here's one that's interesting. Ryan Stanek, his parents, as Greg Allen takes off, throw down to second base, and it's not in time. Greg has a steal, his 14th on the year. He's only been caught once. He didn't waste any time with two down to get himself in a scoring position for Lindor. No, Indians with two more. They have 107 on the year. Only. Uh, they have the second best ratio of stealing bases over 80 percent for the tribe. Ryan Stanek's parents were Cardinals fans but they named him after Ryan Sandberg the Cardinals arch yeah, nemesis. Right. How does that translate. I don't know. 
Obviously a lot of respect for watching him play against their Cardinals all those years. Lindor 30 hits in the month of August only Michael Brantley has had more for the Indians. He took a little something off and it was 90 with his slider. Yeah but you can see how far out front he, he had Lindor. What a job by the catcher to knock that down. Adam Moore, it almost knocked him over. I was going to say, it almost knocked him out. That ball looked like it bounced out in front. And it hit him right in the mask. Watch. That thing jumped up and caught him in the shoulder and then hit his mask off with the spin. <laughs> so that's a wild pitch. And then Allen will go to third. Wow, that's a tough one to stop. Period. He did everything he could. But that was so far out in front of home plate. He's lucky. Well, not really lucky because the runner advanced anyway. But normally, you're, you're lucky to get a body on that ball. High fastball. I was just thinking to myself, if I'm Lindor, I'm sitting fastball after that ball's in the dirt because he doesn't want a wild pitcher run in. But that fastball was so far out of the zone. Thing of it is, though, if you come back with that breaking ball and you don't want to bounce it, you can have a tendency to hang it, and they can go a ways too. Upstairs. Lindor draws the walk. We would invite you to stay tuned following the game. First and foremost to get the highlights to see what happens. Alan Jensen will uh, have all that but also this uh, trading period which by midnight tonight the deadline is that any player that has cleared waivers and can therefore be traded has to be on your roster by midnight tonight in order to be eligible for any kind of postseason play. So there are still some deals in the works and there are a lot of rumors flying around on the internet right now. And so stay tuned for the very latest. I'm sure Al and Jensen will have it all right after the game. There are some conflicting reports right now on the internet with regards to Josh Donaldson. The Toronto Blue Jays former American League MVP. Lindor takes off ball gets away but here comes Greg Allen. He's going to score. How do you like that. Oh the guts of a cat burglar. Allen bolts home from third and it's two to nothing Cleveland. He got a great read off of that pitch at third base. I'm, I'm going to give Lindor a stolen base and then this ball gets away. You see he took one hesitation and then he picked up the ball and saw it got away from Moore and he scores easily. There's your insurance run if you're the Indians. And that comes uh, you know they Allen got the base hit. He stole the base went to third on a wild pitch scores on a wild pitch. Heads up base running right there. There goes Lindor for third and he's safe. He 
You see, he figured everybody, he's not thinking about me now. He wants to throw a strike. You can see the jump. He gets the hand in. So Lindor airs two now. With him 22. Now the 2 0. And Brantley lines one right back through the pitcher Stanek, and Lindor comes home from third. Oh, it's so fitting that Michael Brantley gets a hit in his last at bat in the month of August because he has just been sizzling for the Indians all month long, and his base hit makes it three to nothing Cleveland. He's going to get himself a fastball, and uh, it's out over the plate, and he delivers. Boy, right back past Stanek. He almost lost his balance. It came in at 99. It went out at 105. Jose Ramirez, another ball pops loose, but doesn't get away far. Boy, it's been, it's been a tough a inning. Brutal inning for Adam Moore. I mean, you come into the game cold. Right off the bench, you got a guy throwing 100, and then he yeah. starts chucking balls not in the his dirt. Fault. Yeah, I mean, to his defense, it's not his fault. He's doing everything he can. This is not an easy guy to catch. Neither is the first guy. And then the track meet, they have three stolen bases in the inning, four on the game. up high. Two oh count. And a high pop up. Back of the plate. And out of play. Now the 2 1 offering. And Jose Ramirez out in front of it. Two balls and two strikes. It was a 1 0 game thanks to Edwin Encarnacion's home run in the seventh inning. But with two outs and the bases empty, Greg Allen with a base hit, a stolen base, a couple of wild pitches. Another hit by Michael Brantley, and the Indians have tacked on two more. It's now 3 0 Cleveland as we head to the ninth.
by your local Ford dealers. Jason Kipnis came in on fire tonight, but he's been held without a hit in three trips to the plate. Nobody did much of anything until the late innings tonight for the Indians because Tyler Glass now was just really impressive in his uh, first career start against the Tribe. He certainly was. So we'll probably have a chance to face him when we go back down to, to Tampa in September. But yeah, he was very impressive tonight, and that man did the damage. Got him on the board with a home run off a breaking ball to right center field. This 29th. So Brad Hand will try to close it out for the Indians. And a swing and a foul back by Joey Wendell, who is one for three tonight. Cody Allen pitched a scoreless eighth. How good was Cody Allen tonight? Threw nine pitches, eight of them were strikes, punched out a pair. Had his nice curveball back. That's what he's been looking for. Outside. Wendell takes aim at a fastball and fouls it right back. Can't catch up and strikes out. One down here in the ninth. Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game. This broke the scoreless duel in the seventh. Yeah, that was just a great job of hitting, staying the other way, trying to take it that way. He left that break the ball up a little bit, but that still takes a man to go the other way and hit it out of the No ballpark. doubt about it. And Eddie's one of the few that could do it, and he certainly did tonight, so he's been on a roll. Right back to Brad Hand. Matt Duffy is retired, two down. G-Man Choi 0 for 2 tonight. Walks back to the fourth inning. Swing and a miss. It's 1-1. One and one. We don't have anything official from the Indians ball club, but Edwin Encarnacion could soon be reunited with his former teammate, in Toronto, Josh Donaldson. Jeff Passan of Yahoo Sports reporting the Indians have acquired Donaldson from Toronto, but again, nothing official from the ball club. Stay tuned for Indians Live with Al and Jensen and Andre. They'll be digging it out for you. And they'll have all of the information as it becomes available. But very interesting to say the least. The 1 1. One pitch, and that's a cold strike. Good fastball. Yes, Painted the was. outside corner. 
He wanted to hit it. He thought he was going to get a fastball 2 1 count, but he put it in a great location where he couldn't pull a trigger. So now they are down to their last strike. Two two pitch. Broken bat bouncer to first. Yonder will take it himself. 17 in a row retired by Indians pitching to end the game as the tribe rolls to a series opening win over Tampa Bay by a final score of three to nothing. Corey Kluber the winner. He goes to 17 and seven on the year. And Brad Hand notches the save for the tribe as the Indians go to 77 and 57 on the year. 20 games over that 500 mark while Tampa falls to 71 and 63 on the season. Tough luck loss to Tyler Glass now who is 0 and 2 now on the year with the Tampa Bay Rays. Boy what a job by not only Corey Kluber but then Cody Allen and Brad Hand. Uh, great ball game for the Indians to get this one started off on the right foot. Kluber outstanding and I was really impressed with Corey or uh, with uh, Cody Allen tonight and uh, Edwin Encarnacion got him that lead in the eighth inning. It was beautiful their seventh inning. That was a great job. So the Indians win the series opener three to nothing is the final score final thought when we come back. <laughs> 